Are you ready? Yeah. What's up, guys? So we're just redoing this part. So thank you for coming on. We're having a special Sunday live stream. I want to have my good buddy John, J Mall, John Anthony on. And I've known him for a while. I like the fact that he keeps it real. He actually, you know, has the results to back up the shit he says. And he's quite an interesting character. So thank you for coming on, man. <laughs> What's up? Um, yeah, so you want me to give a background? Yeah, so give a, like a quick uh, overview about yourself. So I, okay, I lost my virginity when I was at the end of my freshman year of college. I went into my third year of college, having been with three chicks. I went into my, uh, I, I finished college having been with 17. And then it wasn't until 10 years after I lost my virginity, literally from 2002 to 2012, but I hit the, hit the first 100 girls, and then I worked for RSD in the fall of 2012, and then started my own thing mid-2013. Um, I was doing about 100 to 150 new girls a year, tracking exactly, because guys are always like, oh, how is it so high? How's it?" Because right now it's at 1,256, and that's like an exact count, even including two trannies, so whatever that's worth. People are like, dude, that means you're gay because you fucked a dude. And I'm like, no, it looked like a female 10. So I'm not the least bit attracted to dudes, but I'm attracted to things that look like a hot chick. Thank you for that important uh, part of the introduction. I feel like that's uh, yeah. <laughs> that's very valuable. So let's, 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 let's backstart. First of all, I think not a lot of people know this about you, but you used to be, you know, you used to have massive amounts of social anxiety. You told me like you didn't, you were religious growing up. Like you were not like a fucking natural basically, right? No. Yeah, out of like 700 kids in my uh, high school, there was uh, like me and like like two other dudes that were like like three of the nerdiest people in the whole fucking school. And um, we would just sit and debate like philosophy and math and science and all this shit at lunch, never talking to any girls. And uh, yeah, I had social anxiety, general anxiety. Um, what else? Panic attacks, all this shit. So I was, I was raised so religious that I was planning on waiting till marriage to have sex, and I was also planning on never drinking my entire life. I quit alcohol uh, nine months ago, and I tell you, we we're just smoking. But uh, <laughs> uh, how did you wind up? Uh, what's the? How did you lose your virginity? It was actually to a fat chick that lived in my uh, across the street from me, or across oh, the to a fat across the dorm hall. No shame in that. Your first was also? Yeah, on a beach in Mexico. This pound. <laughs> that sounds a little cooler. Mine was like in a college dorm. No, but I busted in like 30 seconds inside. Yeah, me too. Really? <laughs> I don't think she even knew we were having sex. Like, I think she no, thought mine, it was mine, we were having sex. Well, but was mine, was like on, mine was like on top, and I like couldn't handle the sensation. We weren't using condoms. I don't know why. I couldn't handle the sensation. And, um, just busted like very quickly and then she uh, but i was like hold on hold on and she's like no no it feels good and then uh finished and then i didn't i didn't know what to do and like the next morning i was like uh so i came inside and she's like ah. I took a plan b and then i think my next couple were fat too <laughs> that's so funny but yeah. these days like we know, we've never talked about this but yeah my story is pretty similar <laughs> that's funny <laughs> Uh, okay, so you've clearly come a very long way since uh, you know since you were um, you know whatever nineteen twenty. What um, what were some catalysts? Like what caused it? What were some of the big influences that caused you to get good? I know you mentioned initially you were just doing mystery method for the first what like year or two or something like that. Uh, first three years. So my my first field report, my first night out was uh, February twenty fourth two thousand nine, doing mystery method. First night out doing formal game and then. I hit uh, 100 in June 2012 before knowing anything else in the community besides Mystery Method. And then I took an RST boot camp at 103. <laughs> I, was, I found I was far better than Tyler and Todd. Just like crushed all three nights. And they were, it was, it was that kind of like burst the whole bubble, brought me out of the, the cult kind of uh, delusion about that company when I, when I saw it. It was funny because Tyler, I had to get in some, some Tyler bashing here, at least for, at least for a moment. But he, he was just getting destroyed, like, literally the entire time, like, way worse than I'd ever seen. And I was asking the girls, because I idolized this guy based on the way he presented himself. And I was asking a lot of girls, just out of genuine curiosity, after the blowouts, like, what do you think of that guy? He's always, like, weird, gay, awkward, 
like super creepy. <laughs> As a quick side note, can you tell the story of uh, what you said, like the perfect ten or something like that? I like that story. Oh yeah, yeah, really, yeah. So quickly, so like, so on, on the last day of this program, so like those of you familiar with RSD, like they have like the hot seat bullshit too, where they're showing like shitty infields, a lot of them staged, and that's been like proven. Um, there was a dude. <laughs> I actually never said this on any videos or, or live but that doesn't matter anymore because we're not for i wasn't supposed to tell anyone because me and sonny were friends but he said some one of his clients told him that he's that he saw julian like instructing a a paid chick about what to do on the infield and how she should react and shit like that and he had a video of it and sent it to sonny mm. but so what, what was the story with the uh perfect so it's like it to be like what the hot seat it's like after the third end of the program and Tyler was like, I've never seen anyone have game like this about me. Has me come to the front of the room, sit next to him. And um, like during the during the talk, he's like, oh, guys, so I was at dinner. And this is like the last bit of the hot seat. He's like, I was at dinner and I um, met this chick who's like a perfect 10. Like He's like, I've been doing game. He's like, you know, guys, I was in the book, the game, blah, blah. I was doing game all over the world. I met so many of the hottest girls in the world. He's like, this girl was like top three hottest girls I've ever seen in my entire life. And I was like, holy fuck. So I took this on to be a personal challenge to get a girl that was that Tyler Durden was, was trying to get, but also because I thought he was really good, even though like, all the evidence was to the contrary. Oh, how do you how did you figure out that or how did you get that subscribe now thing on the bottom? <laughs> it's just an option. I'll show you later. All right. So basically, um, he goes to Texas girl, tries to invite himself over, gets shut down, is very embarrassed in front of everyone, and then um I memorized the number off his phone. It was one of the, it was like the old school Android phones where you can see um, the person's number at the top of the text thread. So I committed the number to memory and then I was like kind of respectful about it. I didn't tell him directly that I took the number, but I checked with Todd. I was like, did he close that chick? Cause she like totally shut him down in front of everyone. He had her on speaker and he's like, no, they never met up. And I was like, okay. So I hit up the chick. I'm like, Hey, I'm friends with Owen. Um, I just moved to Philly. I need somebody to show me around. He said, you're really cool. Start working on flirting, end up getting her on the phone. We're like flirting on the phone. I'm like, hey, like, um, send me a picture of you. I'm really curious. Like six tops, like a busted black chick. Yeah. And just, just to clarify, we have nothing against black chicks. It's just the fact that she was ugly. <laughs> that was the point. I feel like it's important to mention. Uh, That's not what you no, Actually, fun fact, my first girlfriend ever was black. Hmm. Or half black, whatever. Long, long time ago. Looks like you uh, won the black vote. You what? <laughs> it says, looks like you won the black vote. Well, I think it's the, the politicians are all like trying to say like. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my YouTube not to get shut down, man. I'm just trying. To, <laughs> I'm just trying to pander to YouTube, honestly. I'm, I'm proud you. You've uh, you've grown quickly. You nailed it with a, a video by mistake, right? Like you didn't even mean to like. You said you threw that I was, video. I was debating not even putting up that video because I thought yeah. it was so silly. Dude, I, just, I sent that video, I remember, to three or four friends, and I was like, do you guys think I should even bother putting it up? <laughs> and they're like, well, the chick is pretty hot, so it can't hurt. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that was the logic. And then, um, yep, I liked it. But then I kind of, in hindsight, I can see why it became popular because there's actually nothing really like that on YouTube. Like, it, it was a pretty – because we were, we were both fucking around. Like, we weren't taking it seriously. So it was, like, pretty, I don't know, like, authentic – you know, demonstration of escalation. Like it wasn't like super duper yeah, yeah. stage just because we weren't taking it seriously. Um, so, you know, I do think that that's, that's what I was probably the reason why I took that's that. What's so, that's what's like so dumb about YouTube. It's, it's like, it has nothing to do with like any of the value you put out before or after. Like, yeah, I mean, after. like the really good stuff I can't put out. Like there's people, people always ask me for, uh, to put out um, my date in fields and stuff. Like, what do you do when the girl walks in the door? But I can't, I can, well, I can if I get her permission, but if I get her permission, it's going to be fake. You know, it's not going to be, she's going to be putting on a show. So that's going to, that's not going to be the same. And I can't just videotape a girl and then like put it up without telling her because that's like highly legal. So it's like, that's the, especially when it's like at my place, expectation of privacy. That's, that's a quick side note on why I haven't been making those kind of videos. Like, trust me, I want to, I just, you know, can't. Uh, but anyway, I want, I, want to, I want to get back. So, okay, so basically, hey, always guys are always like, show yourself banging the girl so you know that you closed. Just because you have the girl in her underwear in your room on Instagram doesn't mean that you closed. It's like, okay. Yeah, I was debating starting a Pornhub. 
Um, okay, but also oh, get back on track, man. So what? Um, so basically, you realize how did you realize that RSD was like you know a uh, let's say false idol or whatever? Like, what was the was there like one point where you're like, yeah, what the fuck am I? Like, why am I? Why am I watching their videos? Or was it just more of a culmination of things? Well, first of all, there's there's almost zero practical advice in any video. <laughs> That's problem number one. I would make the argument that like five years ago there was some. Like now, I 100% agree. But like five six years ago, there was a little bit of value. Yeah, a little bit sometimes, and only from certain people. Like, like especially old. Yeah, not really. It's more like old. Like school. You know, Julian married an, like an ugly chick and just had a kid with her too. Apparently, oh. um, Julian. She's. I saw a picture of her. She's not ugly. She's just not super duper attractive. <laughs> She's slightly above average. That's kind of how. We're doing. <laughs> she's just not super attractive. Um, I mean, she's not a stunner, but she's she's definitely not ugly. Yeah. Why well, I mean, she's not that great. Like, you could probably do better on like any given weekend if you wanted to. But this is a disappointing. Yeah, but he had the best stuff out of RST for sure. Like, yeah, I still 100%. think. His, I still think his manifesto. Um, it's like two two and a half hours or something. Gets a bunch of stuff right. Still a long ways to go to, to getting optimal, but that was like the best thing they ever put out. But no, okay. So, it, um, as a quick side note, I thought his pimp product was the best piece of content RSD put out. That, that was his first product. I thought he did a way better job on that than any other product he did after that. So here, there's an issue, like a quick summation of why I don't like that company is like, I've heard or seen firsthand them being extremely shady in many ways, lying in many ways. Um, fucking tons of people over in many ways purposely misleading people plus the whole business model is predicated around buying more products for life they don't actually solve the problem for you so the solution is just to, to stay on the hamster wheel and keep buying the products and you don't meet any dudes that get really good from rsd ever it's, like well, it's a combination of things first of all it's a faulty business model because you're trying to basically sell a dream in the span of three days like you're not going to take a guy who's super duper socially awkward and make him a pimp in three days it's not going to happen so then they don't have really a membership type of thing. It's more of like product, product, product. But honestly, you don't really need more than one or two products. You know, like you only have 30 products. Uh, so it's just a faulty business model and then a lack of business ethic. So like, you know, they're just comfortable, like straight up lying and like, saying looks don't matter. And then people, believe that. <laughs> but I feel like also like kind of what you mentioned, some of your videos, it's like becomes a little bit of a cult type of thing where like, you know, the cult leader believes his own you know, shit. So it's like, it, I don't think it's consciously like, hey, I'm gonna lie to these people. I think it's just kind of like, you start to believe your own, you know, whatever, your own BS after a while. Mm -hmm. I never I never stopped the live stream that was going to my channel. Anyway, so to get back on track. Okay, so you realized that RSD was full of shit. Uh, what were some honest, like good, good sources that actually helped you get good? Like legit sources. Um, I, would, I thought Mystery had the, had the best stuff overall by far than anyone. Okay, so Mystery method. I still think he does, even though there's like a million new like fucking idiots that come up, come around every single year. Like some of these like coaches, coaches and gurus have been found out. Like one, like one dude, um, that it was discovered and even admitted it that he only he'd only banged like eight girls, and it, that none of them were from Cold Approach. It was just through like online dating. But to be honest, dude, I've seen you out and I've seen videos of uh, what's his name, Mystery, and uh, your styles are pretty different. Like Mystery, you're you're just very like kind of like I would say uh, I don't know, like a confident frat boy style. I mean that in like a good way. Like it's more like natural. Like it just it just it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like you're trying to put on a show, right? Versus Mystery style is more of like Uglies, <laughs> uh, fucking whatever balls. So that would, yeah. I mean that's that would be in like slightly gimmicky things in the vibe, but like in terms of the structure, he's moving things forward like very methodically, and it's a lot of like if this happens, do this; if this, do this. And like at the core of his whole method is the compliance model, where it's compliance tests, either indicator of interest, or indicator of disinterest, or sorry, compliance tests, compliance or non-compliance. And if you get non-compliance, then you give an indicator of disinterest, and then retest for compliance. And it's just like a beautiful little flowchart. And I think that's like the most common or the most powerful. You do like your flow charts as well. Yeah, but that's like the most cornerstone thing in game and sales and in persuasion and rapport. And in every little piece of the game filters down to compliance or non-compliance. And then 
I think the most solid game is just knowing what to do in the non-compliant cases optimally. So there's, there's only like so many paths that you can fork to. And I train guys on the most common paths. So they, oh. that's why people say my method is like Jordan Belfort straight line persuasion system is because you're advancing things along a straight line. It diverges towards something that goes like a non-compliant step. And then you know how to bring it back while at the same time gauging like what is it? I always tell guys you have to make a real time probabilistic assessment of the odds of it going down with that chick and bringing her home or her wanting to meet up later or whatever. But I think you and I agree on a lot of things when it comes to this kind of stuff. I think we agree on the fact that there's a huge uh, similarity between sales and pickup. Like yeah. I also, I did sales for in case anyone doesn't know, I did sales for like four years. I, I would still say I was a much better salesperson than I ever was at picking up girls. You know, it's just because of my what my livelihood depended on. Like you know, I was doing like fifty hours a week. Uh, but that's really the reason. So sales. Um, for sure, uh, the huge overlap. Also, uh, we both don't like gamey shit. Like we're not into like like we both constantly give guys shit for being like overly fancy, overly gamey, like overly witty. So we both heavily frown on that. Um, I think another thing is we also believe in screening girls out. So if we we feel like a girl is like just putting up a lot of like we're not gonna try to win over every girl. We're gonna focus on like I also do that. Like who's the most like like what is my realistic probability of getting this girl? Not just like, okay, first girl I open, I have to like spend my whole night on this girl. Yep. I had the private chat open the whole time. I was like, why the fuck isn't anyone commenting? Yeah, <laughs> do you wanna we're, we're getting a shitload of comments, but I do want to get through your story. So what were some other sources um, besides mystery that you found? Okay, out? here let me let me bash an RC just a tiny bit more because well, let's, let's, let's get to that. Let's get to that because I I do want to cover that, but let's let's just kind of get through your story and then we'll we'll fucking hammer okay. RC. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, so okay, so um, it, for the, the only real good thing that the RSC bootcamp I took did in June 2012 was like, no, 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 it ties, it ties in. Okay, it's actually the next part of the story because I left off like I did Mr. Mesta to 100. I took the RSC program 103, and that like lit the pickup bug inside me. Well, actually, the when I read the book The Game, that, that let the pick up bug, and then I went right over to Mystery Method after. So one of those really nerdy guys from high school that was um, the other really, the other really smart guys I knew in, in high school. And it's funny, because we were all playing like wireless chess all the time. It was like before wireless technology. It was these devices that could communicate within 50 feet. And we were in like, I was in like seven AP class, advanced placement classes in my last year of high school. And we would play chess while we were in advanced placement classes. And then at lunch, we would like debate like all this like really advanced science stuff and then just sneak out of the lunchroom and go and day trade stocks on the school computers because there was no like internet on phones yet. And um, one of them ended up, ended up doing a PhD in quantum physics and settling in with string theory. And he's like living on a boat <laughs> right now. But he, he kept telling me for like two years, like, dude, you need to read the book, The Game. You need to read the book, Mystery Method. There's like a method to this that's like very analytical and right up our alley. This is the way we think. And I was like, fuck that. That's bullshit. Like, I refused to read any of this stuff for, like, two years, which is crazy looking back. Um, I was, like, extremely skeptical about it. Why? Wow. Uh, what was your hesitation? Um, just because it was, like, so massively confusing to me. I couldn't – it didn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason because I was just, like ma – I was massively frustrated and uh. – the whole, the whole thing, I mean, like, it's terrible to be in that. That's where most guys are, and it's terrible to, to be there, and you just see, like, other guys succeeding. I remember just, like, looking at other guys with chicks and being like, wow, what the fuck? Dude, it's like, fucking heartbreaking. I remember freshman year of college, like, my roommate was fucking other girls. And <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> You're done here jerking off while you had girls over? <laughs> no, I was just fucking... Uh, I don't even know what I was doing. I was watching like Simpsons or something like that. Something yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I was, no freshman in college should be doing. I, I had trouble even talking to guys. Like, like I had trouble talking to anyone. Like, if anyone tried to talk to me, I would turn bright red. And like, See, I, I never had that. I could always chat with dudes or fat chicks, people who I didn't find attractive. I had no problem <laughs> with. It came down to like girls who I found attractive. I put them on like a massive pedestal, even if they weren't that hot, even if they were just kind of attractive. I put them on this pedestal, and I was like, okay. I can't talk to them the way I would talk to my friends. I have to like do some kind of crazy shit and like fucking just come off like really awkward all the time. Yeah, I, have an, I have an idea. If I put a hat on, then you can't see the fucking glare on my head. All right. So yeah, 
continue. So, no, so back to influences. So you said RSD Bootcamp. Yep. Was... Keep going. Well, this, this is a question is directed at you. So what were some other influences? Like what were some legit sources that you learned from? That's it. Um, really? natural, naturals, like like in terms of formal game. Oh, okay. So so from there, like once I got what I could out of Mystery Method, I I, I tried other stuff, but it, I realized it was it was really shitty and it, it would underperform my stuff. Have you ever heard of um, the two sources that I learned a lot from was uh, Revolutionary Lifestyle Design and Swoop the World? Have you ever heard of those guys? No. What, dude, I, I was so. I, I just assumed any advice was like going to be legitimate, especially if they were talking a big game. So I was reading like stupid bullshit from like the social man by Christian Hudson or, or like fucking Bobby Rio or like these other just marketer newsletters. And I was like trying to, but I could see it wasn't really working. It, my own, my own experiences and just my own analysis started to like win. Once I yeah, had to watch frustrating for guys because this industry is primarily dominated by internet marketers. So it's like, like, who do I believe? Like, I've been like I've been lied to so many times. It's like I'm like you can't, you can't believe almost anyone in the industry. I, the only guys I endorse on YouTube are like you and Bradicus, and like that's that's coming from like I don't know anyone else with an account a real account close to mine. And like I I've looked at I'll, I'll buy co guys courses and I'll go through them in detail, and it's all it's all dog shit. That I, I talked about how I went I went through simple pickups course because those guys are making three hundred k a month. Yeah, like, they were making at their peak. They were making like six hundred k a month. Yeah, and all they were doing was combining pop culture with like the sensationalism of prank videos, and they have kind of like a formula to make stuff go viral. And um, yeah, they were they were very good YouTube marketers. Yeah, and I went through their project Go, and um, yeah, me too. Um, the Asian dude, he's just like, yeah. So he's like, notice how in this interaction, I asked the girl about the color red because um, Aphrodite and like it's the color of love and like this and that. and it's just like. This is completely off. Like, <laughs> and a lot of the game was like that. You know, like, there, there was no, it was this terrible game, just like most of the rest of the shit out there. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to guys on a almost daily basis, at least weekly basis, that have for since 2013 that have been have wasted shitloads of time and effort and money with these other companies. But these other companies have had better marketing than us. And that's I have a whole bunch of shit in place right now where it's. <clears throat> I'm planning to scale really big in this industry very soon, but for the longest time, I just didn't give a shit. And um, and some of the other best guys I know in the game don't care, and so they have like zero presence or zero knowledge or, or zero uh, people have not have knowledge of them, and they're like super super good. They've been doing all this stuff. It's not so much that they don't care, but most of the guys that I personally know who you have like the best game I've ever seen, like pickup is not their main job. They work as you know, like they have like whatever other day jobs where they focus their energy on like to them like pickup is like no big deal so they don't feel like they don't see the value like the guy who i learned probably the most from was one of my college friends named Saul, and he was just like this cool natural who i was really good friends with i lived with him for a year but anyway so like he just uh, we always talk about like, dude like you're way better than every single dude on youtube like you should fucking you know teach this he's like How? he's like it's boring man like i don't he's like I i'd rather just go invent something or something like that. Like you just, you just never found it exciting. So I think that's like, like guys who are like naturally good. They just don't find like that interesting to like, well, you need, okay. You need, you need like a really heavy drive component. Like, like George's St. Pierre, he's considered like the greatest mixed martial, art, martial artist of all time. He was like beat up as a kid. And this other guy I learned a lot yes. from martial arts got bullied a shitload and that gave them the drive to become like the best fighter in the world. So like, I like openly thank my mom. Like I, I've, I've said it a whole bunch of times. Like I'm not ashamed of it. I like went through like terrible, terrible verbal abuse and it just like created this like massive void that I just, for better or worse, <laughs> at least from a hedonistic, hedonistic perspective, it was better. It just gave like this massive, massive drive to like bang as many vaginas as possible. But it could have, the count could have been way higher because I've, I've often prioritized ro rotation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no really and i run and i run really big rotations when you're running no, I'm, I'm, la I'm laughing because it's like like anyone watching this is like you know what like jmoff seems like a smart guy but his count's a little too low for my taste you know? <laughs> i don't know about this 1200 you know if he was a 1400 i would buy his product but 1200 you can't really take the man seriously you know um plus he said two of them were tranny so that's <laughs> 1100 like fuck this guy um 
There's, yeah, people, that, that. there's people out there that, that claim my entire account is trannies. That would be a lot of trannies, man. <laughs> a lot of trannies. That would actually probably be harder than fucking 1,200 girl, regular girls, but <laughs> so many trannies. I like, oh, that would be insane. Um, okay, so you primarily started off, you were never big on day game. You primarily started off doing night game. You said, like, yeah, my first, first, my first almost 400 were night. I remember <clears throat> it was around the 385 mark when I, like, I remember specifically because I was like kind of making a shift towards online, not like completely online, but incorporating online. And I well, still you were initially get anti online. What made you go from anti online to, yeah. I used to be, I used to really anti online because um, there's like so much work that goes into good night game and like so much shit you have to deal with. Uh -huh. Like, like, like a good night game night out is like you, you get to the bar or club at like 10. Um, like the stuff in America closes at two. You do like four hours of like basically grinding, grinding shit out. And then like dealing with a bunch of friends and obstacles and, and cock blocking and like all this objection bullshit. And then like, the chick can still get blocked on the way to the cab or like the way home or like you there's get a back. lot of variables outside of your control. You get, yeah, you get back and she's on a bank. Like looking at it now compared to online, it's like what the hell was I even doing that for? It is cool though because it cultivated a lot of other areas of the game and it just allowed me to have tons of experiences. Like there's twelve thousand uh four hundred contacts in my phone. That's what mixed with online, obviously, but um show that i was showing some so what, what was, was there like one thing that made you make the switch from um from just purely night game i can't see it at all man it doesn't show up hold on, hold on one sec uh let's see no, it's all good dude I, <laughs> everyone believes you i'm sure um what was it okay okay you can get the phone there it is t12 386 <laughs> All right, dude. So, what was the uh, what was the thing that like made you go from you know purely night to actually like because now right now you're primarily doing online, right? Yeah. So what what what, what made you make the transition? Well, no, I thought it, yeah, I didn't finish that point. I, like I thought it was like cheating. I thought it was like cheating. It was like oh, if a, if a really good looking guy can just go on there and like you know shortcut all the fucking work that I had to do because of game, it's almost like it just what it didn't seem like pure. It was like uh -huh. you know, it's like if you sat down at the poker table. And just like we're really big or something, and you like intimidate people, and they just gave you their money instead of like playing poker and winning the money. That's how it felt like. Right. So, but then what? Uh, what's your mindset now? Like, how wh you went from that to where where you at now? Um. Well, I, well <laughs> it's funny because they both threatened a lawsuit on us, but I'm, but I'm going to mention them anyways, not to use the copyright here, but uh, <laughs> seeking arrangement kind of bridged the gap between because I, I didn't like on that online a lot of the quality goes down in the states that was another problem because i like my quality high like a lot of guys think like oh if you bend a lot of girls your quality must be low no you can keep your quality high by only swiping on seven seven five plus or only approaching seven 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 five plus it's really that simple like you don't put in leads that are not attractive and then you don't have to bang attract unattractive girls so um seeking arrangement kind of fixed the quality problem with online and I was able to use that as a lead source and break the whole frame of them being um, a sugar person. I'm not going to go into the strategy here because they told us, don't speak of us in that way. Yeah, let's 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 not get too heavily on that because uh, uh, <laughs> we have some legal issues with them. So I'd rather <laughs> just avoid that kind of black area. Well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, so but just to be clear, like you're not even really using Secret Nature right now. So it's not <laughs> All your online mm -hmm. leads are coming from no, Tinder. no, no. no well, in Eastern Europe and South America, uh, Tinder goes way up in utility. So, like, Tinder is killer in those places. So, um, so like, I, just to clarify, Tinder is definitely a lot better in those places. But I live in Miami, and I still, you know, like, like I banged a girl two nights ago from Tinder. Like I banged you know, a week ago from Hinge. Like, a dating and all these girls are hot, you know. So, like, dating apps still definitely work in America. They're just easier in other countries. Well, yeah, I also didn't have like very much online game strategy up front either. So it's like if you don't bring a good game to Tinder, like I wasn't using Pro Picks for the first. This is back in when I, cause I hit 400 in early 2014. No, 20, early 2015, because that's what I was at the end of San Diego. So early 2014, as it was like going into uh, January, February 2014, I was around like 385, 2015. And then, yeah, so it was like five years ago. And I wasn't using pro pictures and that, and there wasn't things like face app, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Okay. So, um, uh, to touch on that. So what, um, 
What would you say like the pros and cons are? Because you've extensively done both night game and online. What would you say are the pros and cons with each? Um, night game is good because you can only approach like like I'm in Florianapolis, Brazil right now, and there's like nines all over the place. Wait, can you speak up a little bit, dude? I, it's kind of yeah. breaking up just a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm in Florianapolis, Brazil right now, and there's like nines all over the place, and it's easy to um, approach super hot chicks at the um, when you're out in public. So like you don't run out of nines. Like, like one problem <clears throat> in like smaller venues or a lot of the, the clubs in the states in smaller cities, etc., is the chicks aren't as hot percentage wise because eighty percent of the people are overweight in the states. Um, you know, not many people want overweight chicks. Um, so it give like, but in general, you you get to choose. You can only just walk in and talk to really hot chicks. Like like I, my favorite night game venues. Are with the most people and like so just the biggest size. Like whenever I go to teach a, a boot camp in like a new city, um, I usually have people that recommend stuff anyways, and they tell me the biggest venues. But you can just Google any club name and then capacity, and it'll be like 800, 1200, whatever. I like multiple floors if possible, multiple rooms if possible, because all that that adds like value to isolations. You can approach on one floor, like the second floor, you then you move to the first floor near near the exit, or you approach on the first floor and move to a bar near the first floor. So like some of these clubs in Vegas were really good where you could just walk to the dance floor, approach. Let me, let me very quickly stop you. So um, you prefer, so you think that um, like big clubs are better than, for example, like an outdoor more chill out? Well, no, the other big factor is like your ability for them to hear you and like not be interrupted by a busy crowd or like a dance floor. Like, the clubs in Miami are shit, even though they're huge venues. Like it, like uh, story, for instance, there's a site that I like, generally hate clubs all around. Yeah, but like, like oh, the, my, also because my voice gives out pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, Miami, Miami is like a good example of like giant clubs that suck for game because um, it looks like there's a ton of people and there's like tons of hot girls. But if, if the club's mostly tables, like a lot of the clubs in New York City, if the club's mostly tables and you don't have access to those girls, or if it's so busy and crowded that you can't move that much so you can't like open most of those girls it's just like an illusion of being good for game Dude, it's like when you're anyone who lives in miami would think that clubs are the best place to meet girls like there's so many like chill lounges with like great ratio no cover or maybe you know where drinks are a fraction of the price and then like you can actually talk they're big there's so many way yeah. better places yeah, yeah, yeah you have to take all that into account so like if if there's like a medium-sized open air venue i'll hit that i'll hit that every time because you can open everyone in there and they're not getting distracted by the dance floor and, and it being too crowded like probably the best game i've ever found in the world or the best venue i've ever found in the world is actually in the city i'm living now in florianopolis and it's five thousand person capacity and it's all outdoor open air mm. so so there's like no interruptions everywhere you can hear everyone except for like very close to the dj and it's the highest concentration of girl, hot girls I've ever seen in one place either. Really? Okay. I'll have to check that it, out. I would, say, I would say like 60 to 70% plus were above an eight. And it was like almost packed. This was during Carnival in Brazil. But that it's it's just like, it's a joke. It's like, it's it's extremely rare to see like ugly chicks out of top when there's seas of thousands. I'm not. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stay here a long time. So this is this is. Uh, you've told me this is the, the your favorite place. That yeah. That, and you've lived pretty much everywhere. Yeah. You like yeah. Just like a quick summary of that. Like, I wouldn't go. But a lot of people are like Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. I hate Ukraine for game. Like, <laughs> it's just like the girls take two to four dates to close. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that from numerous other people. Like every single person I know who goes to Ukraine says that. It's very, it's very rare to close on a first date, and it's like this is yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Even a lot. like I don't follow Rush V, but he spent. He has this video where I thought it was really cool. He was really honest about it. He's like, I spent six months across three major Ukrainian cities. I tried different forms of game. I tried different forms of venues. He's like, believe me, I tried everything. He's like, I failed to get a same night lay from all that practice, and I was like. I had like the same experience. Like I, I was even running things like fully textbook and they would like, like perfect, almost like close to a perfect set and stuff like that. And like, it was just like impenetrable. There's just like this cultural stupid shit. There's and then, like, and there'd be situations where it's like, okay, this is our fourth date. You're still saying it's way too soon to go to my house and you won't kiss me still. And you're like, <laughs> 
It's just like, yeah, it's, it's a way too soon to give like, each other. Why would you, it's, it's like massive like, frustration. Like normally it's like this girl first date, this rotation girl, this rotation girl, this girl first date in a schedule. Dude, this, I, I know. I remember when you were there, you were like texting me you're like, fuck, God damn, another chick who said it was too soon. Dude, and then you, and then sometimes you lose them like before you even get a kiss and you like spent four dates with them. And I, and I was trying to screen hard for gold diggers, but there's a lot of gold diggers there too because there's so much sex tourism. But um, your credit is highly overrated from everything I hear. I think like South America is a lot better, or other yeah. parts of Eastern Europe. Well, the big problem with South America is the danger factor. Like I was almost shot three times in Puerto Rico. Uh, there was uh, even though that's technically America. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about Latin. Yeah, the Latin. Yeah, I know what you mean. But you said Florinopolis is actually pretty safe from what you've seen. Yeah, yeah, but like Sao Paulo and Rio, like it said, I think there was. In Rio, like two years ago, there was more murders in Rio than in North America and Europe combined. In the, in the, like the whole two continents combined. Um, and in Colombia, like you had a machete situation. Yes. But to be fair, that was in Bogota. I think Bogota is a lot sketchier than uh, Medellin. In Medellin, though, like day two of my trip, I was with Sonny and he got drugged and, drugged and robbed. Yeah, I, it does happen. I wonder if, if I wonder if there's anything he fucked up on his end, like if he just missed some obvious signs. Because there are some girls that are like kind of sketchy, in Medellin, but it's like really I pick up on it like pretty quickly. Like they're just you can they're just like faking like their interest. I don't know. Like I've seen weird shit like that. Like I don't know if I ever told you this story, but me and Blake we had a double date. It was in Cartagena, and the girls were being so sketchy. And then Blake texts me and he's like, "Yo, I just saw her put something in your drink." I was like, okay. So I took the drink and I was like, I was, I, I was did one of these. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm kind of full. Do you want some? And she's like, no, okay, I don't need it. I'm like, no, no, drink a little bit. She's like, no, 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 you drink. I'm like, no, no, you drink. <laughs> yeah, I would never go back to Colombia. Uh, I love Midian. I'll definitely want to go back there. But I do want to check out Florinopolis from everything that you've uh, told me about. So right now, it's, still, it's your favorite place. So you can beat out like Poland. Yeah, Poland is probably my second favorite. Uh, the big issue with Poland is the girls don't typically have big asses. But Pol but Poland was like, and you probably noticed the same, like it was like the, the place that had the biggest natural tits. There were some huge titties in Poland. <laughs> also, yeah. Yeah, like, I like the, like the girls are very like, they want to like, you know, they'll cook for you and stuff. Like not so much that I need someone to pamper me, but it's just like very like feminine. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Brazil is the same way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one um, thing I personally noticed from, like, you know, just living in Miami and hooking up with a lot of Latinas is, like, the amount of effort a Latina will put into getting ready is 100 times more than, like, an average American. Like, a Latina, like, dude, I literally, I was seeing this girl, like, we actually did, <laughs> she was from Colombia, and she would literally spend, like, an hour and a half getting ready before coming over. Like, she already knows I like her, but she would still do that, you know? And she told me that's like extremely common versus like American girls <laughs> quite often like they don't give a shit. They're almost like proud of the fact that like they're like, yeah, I didn't even shower. <laughs> I'm like, all right, like what do you want a high five or something? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Latina is my favorite by far. But yeah, the, like the big the big boxes of checks down here is there's 42 beaches on the island. It's the high, highest concentration of hot chicks I've ever seen in one place. The chicks are super cool internally. Um, I was running like eight different girls for threesomes out of the 12 girl rotation. Um, Four sums, they're just like ultra chill with everything. They're hot, they're, they're just stacked genetically. Like a lot of these girls um, that I've been banging are like above a nine just genetics, like with no gym. Yeah, I've seen like some of the books that you showed me. There's, I, there's, I'll be like, hey, like, so you work out like every day and never been in a gym ever. <laughs> and, and, that, and she's like by far better than like, you know, all the chicks that are like, busting their ass trying to work out yeah i mean it's, it's almost unfair to like other girls but yeah yeah i know what you mean plus they're not like huge cunts like i i've, I've ran into like minimal huge cunts um which is awesome but in the states it's like hard not to run into a huge cunt i feel yeah i feel like uh i mean there's definitely like again there's 100 percent some really cool girls in the u.s i've met many many of them i feel like it's just when we, when we kind of go into averages like one thing i've noticed especially about miami which kind of like goes me the wrong way is like any girl who's above an eight she's gonna like have this like just massive ego like which which gets annoying like when when the girl's constantly like like she basically will always try like 
Oh, well, you get this oh, from you do that. I'm you know what I think? You know what I think that is? Oh. Like, there's a whole bunch of cultural influences too, but if you just look at like, um, what's it called? Like, well, standard defi- standard deviations. Like, since 80% of the girls in America are fat, right? That that like little 20% that aren't fat. I know there's like still the normal things like is her face busted, like et cetera, et cetera. Does she have a good body? Whereas a place like here, the whole bell curve shifts because yeah. you're like mostly just seeing like attractive girl, attractive like on Tinder, attractive girl, attractive girl, attractive girl, attractive girl. I don't like that face, attractive girl, attra- but you're not seeing like fat. Like in the US, there's just so much like cannon fodder. It's like the, <laughs> the best way to, to put it, not just on Tinder, but in everywhere. It's fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's really uh, totally different. So I want to, I want to, because I do want to get to the questions, but I do want to touch on three things before we do that, which I really <laughs> want to get into. So, can you give um, like a, like an overview on what are the most important things when it comes to getting good at night game? Like oh. just like the, the big overarching things that guys should keep in mind. Wear your mask at the club. <laughs> um, no, I don't know who knows when the fuck we can do night game again, but. Uh, the biggest things. The biggest things that you that you run, just run short sets. Just these few I things. Say, I would say, like from all my experience, run short sets. Like run your sets under five minutes for sure. Go for like the maximum number of phone numbers possible. So I always tell my students shoot for between ten and fifteen phone numbers a night, and that's like way more than guys are used to trying to get. But it's all a numbers game, like. There's tons of skill involved, but like volume trumps a lot of things. Yeah. And there's plenty of girls that will turn into bangs that you had really short conversations with. Yes, in general, longer sets are better, but that also gives like more time to fuck things up or like yeah. stall the value out or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Or like linger when you're not supposed to or, or different things like that. So like I tell guys, like if you think about it, if you're out from like 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. and you talk to one girl every half hour, then that's and you get all those phone numbers. If if you don't, I I tell guys to know when to cut bait and move on as well because the biggest commodity that you're battling is time. So you don't want to like as soon as the girl like like students are always like extremely shocked. I don't remember if you remember when you came out with me the first time, like how quickly I move on from a, an interaction. How quick what? How quickly I move on from an interaction. Like if the girls, yeah. um, like if she's like hey I'm like hey what's up I want to meet you real quick. She's like, oh, sorry, I have a boyfriend. I like instantly go to like the, the chick like as closest to her as possible. It's also hot. And then like, but guys are like, well, why don't you try to get her to hang out anyways as friends? It's like, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, like a lot of this stuff, and, and like with the, with the boyfriend one, it's like either she's not interested or in, in lying or she really has a boyfriend and you have a low probability. In both cases, the correct move is to move on most yeah. of the time, you know, and guys will... Yeah, I even see students on my live programs. I'm like, dude, like, fucking drop it. And he's like, he's like, hey, but I promise we'll just be friends. And like, you can even bring your boyfriend. And I'm, I have to like pull him out of there. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you want to go and sit down with a girl and have the boyfriend be there, like, fucking grilling you and shit? Like, where is that going to go? Yeah, and I like, 100% agree. Like, you so, like, so I'm trying to cut bait. Plus, like, if she's just being like generally non compliant. Remember, I said in the beginning, like, everything's like compliance. If I'm like, hey, I want to meet you real quick. And she's just like, yeah. And I'm like, can I just talk to you for a second? And she, if she's just like, like that or whatever, I'm just instantly gone. Like, I, like I'm trying to all every every like second of interaction is like adding more information to the game. And if the general vibe is like, she's a cunt or like she's just like not down for whatever, whatever. Like I don't even care to try to like turn it around most of the time. There's so that's why again why I like the bigger venues. So I'm like I'm looking for like mystery. I think this is very relevant. He says there's like three categories of girls. There's like green apple, red apple, yellow apple. And the red apple is like the girls that are very unreceptive or that are openly hostile or like give you a blow off or ignore you or whatever. And that's fine because I know those are coming every single time you do game. And lots of guys don't realize that you, you no matter how good you are at game, unless you're like an, a recognizable celebrity, you're going to run into those red apples. That doesn't mean you suck. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're not enough. It doesn't mean that, that you know, you have low value. That's just, the best salesman in the world can't knock on a door and guarantee that they're not going to slam the door in his face and tell him to fuck off or any other number of things. So you have to have like tough skin, but just knowing in advance that there's that type of girl doesn't, you know, it shouldn't throw you. Then there's all the ones that are like lukewarm. And then there's the ones that like bust wide open with 
a stupid game term. <laughs> to go back to the salesman analogy, I think also a good salesman can pick up pretty quickly whether this prospect is likely to buy or a total waste of their time. While a bad salesman will spend half an hour on each prospect, but a good salesman can tell within the first few minutes if a sale has the potential to happen, and if it doesn't, it just moves on. Yeah, every, everything I'm doing is like is, is to move. Like in the nightcam interaction, like every second of interaction is like for some strategic purpose. It's like I'm advancing this particular step forward with the goal of trying to take her out of there. But again, I, as I've as I've done more and more over the over the years, like I think pulling is like extremely, extremely, extremely overrated, and it's almost not even worth it in most cases, because like say you say you go like I can pull the first or second set of the night a lot of times, but if I stay in the venue the whole time, I can get like ten to fifteen solid numbers, and then get potentially like four of those on on dates. Or I'm just saying four, like as it's around, that you're you're getting like a, a much greater uh, long-term overall result. Like dates, like to to get lots of girls, like your bread and butter has to be dates. Whether you're getting the numbers from online or whether you're getting the numbers from nightclubs, just setting tons of dates. That's how you're gonna get tons of results. So like that's, but that's like barely ever barely ever said. Yes, I hundred percent agree with that. Like RSD for the longest time was was pushing like, oh, you have to pull, you have to pull, you have to pull. And like even at a high level of game, you can patrol the clubs five up four or five hours a night and maybe pull like two of them or three of them or whatever. It's like very, very difficult to pull every single time. Whereas you can stack dates because there's so many things against you, right? But then like all the friends, all the objections, everything else. But when you stack dates, if they come straight to the house, that's the end state of a pull. From like a theoretical standpoint in game like after doing all this extra hard work like there you are like at your house with the girl from from uh so obviously the, the the best method is to use the easiest short circuit is online game to date straight to the house and then you know next best thing from there is online game to public date but i'm doing quick short sets so it's almost like swiping on tinder or something like that so in a nightclub i'm just trying to make a very good first impression and hard frame her for a meetup and i'm doing that with every single girl and i ask them in the interaction when they are free as well because i want while the vibe and buying temperature is up that's when i want to lock them in for a date and get them to agree to a date so my typical interactions look like this i say hey i'm john i want to meet you real quick um what's your name she's like blah 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 i'm like cool i just moved here and i say this even if i've lived in the city four or five years it's like kind of an excuse to go up and talk to her, but also it allows me to like talk about what my job is and which my job thing is just to demonstrate value. <clears throat> so I say, Hey, what's up? Um, I just moved here. I'm going to be DJing at clubs X and Y. And I said, top two clubs. And the reason why I do that is mystery talked at length about how you can import a whole bunch of value and social proof by cementing an identity up front. So I don't want to just like bounce around about random you know, do you feel like that might actually work better for you because you actually know you actually used to DJ? Like, do you feel like it's kind of more congruent for you just because of your background? Yeah, but like everyone, everyone's afraid to say it because they're worried they're gonna have to show proof. But like, even though I really did DJ before, they're never asking me technical DJ questions about production or about whatever, and they're never asking me to to prove. Like once in a while, they're like, "Can I see your your music? Can I see your SoundCloud or whatever?" But and I have that, but it, you don't need that. Um, <laughs> I just looked over at the comments. Someone said, I followed the text rules and a girl called the police on me last night. What do I do? Dude, as a quick side note, um, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this, but what I found actually works the best is when, when girls ask me what I do, I say I'm a sex and dating coach. And dude, that works so well because they get so hooked. It's like a shortcut to like sexualizing so easy. So we're like, really? Well, are you going to be able to give me advice? I'm like, are you cute? You're not struggling, are you? I'm like, what's going on with you? Like, are you prematurely? Like, it's such a shortcut to like just sexualizing the whole conversation. And you also demonstrate the fact that you're an authority. So the girl automatically thinks like, ooh, so are you going to be like, is this, am I going to be in for a professional experience? Like, I find that like, when I first heard about that idea, I thought it was going to blow out like most sets, but I don't think it's ever worked against me. Damn. Yeah, you should give that a shot one day, man. Just a quick side note. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think David Swift uses that as well, right? Yeah. And he has business. Everyone. 
David Swift, Nathan, um, what's it called? The uh, some of the Ultimate Man Project guys. I don't know. I, I would never say that. I think it's kind of. I think it sounds a little too techy. It sounds a little bit too much like it's a lie. Yeah, sometimes girls say that I'm lying, and I show my Instagram what says "sex and dating coach," and they're like, "Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I have uh, I have ways around that." Um, okay, so that kind of uh, is there any more thoughts on night game? Um. Yeah, I, mean, I could talk about it for a while, but but like the the biggest things are to like get ten to fifteen numbers, frame them all for meetups, cement an identity and, and a whole bunch of value. That doesn't mean you need to lie or say anything outrageous, but you should say something that makes you stand out and makes you memorable. And then I try to get in flirtation, uh, sexual innuendos, and physicality to show that I'm interested in something that that's. Yeah, one, one, one thing I do that I just I remember. Um, well, so if a girl's like from another country, like she'll be like, "Oh, um, um, be like, oh, cool, you have a cute accent. Where are you from?" She'll be like, "I'm from Venezuela." I'm like, "Oh, cool. My ex is actually from there, and I'll name a city. Oh, my ex is from Valencia, and that's actually true. But like pretty much any any South American or whatever city, I'll say, "Oh, cool, my ex is from there." And I think it gives you like a nice D tree because it shows that like, okay, like first off you get laid, and second of all you're familiar with their culture. So I think that's also another thing that works pretty well. <laughs> uh, but I definitely agree about the um, the foot, like uh, most of my day game and night game lays and people. I do I do have like fucking girls that bang from everywhere, so I say that too. But I, it's mostly because it's true. Most, most, of, most, of, most of the people watching this probably think I only do online, but actually my first uh, hundred or so. Um, girls that I slept with were from a combination of day game and night game. But anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is like. The majority of those were like a five, 10 minute interaction, which was a number. Like maybe 20% were like same day or same night pull, something like that. It was well under 50%. Uh, so I do agree that it's overrated. I think that also um, a lot of guys fuck up because they go for the Instagram or for the Snapchat. Like if you meet a girl in real life, go for the number. I'm reading, I'm reading some of these comments. Yeah, well, we'll, no, we'll get to the comments. Do you agree with that, that you should just go for the number? You shouldn't fucking dick around with Snapchat or Instagram? I have zero Instagram and zero Snapchat closes still. Like, I made my first Instagram, like, a few weeks ago. But my whole my whole reason for not having those before and, and not wanting to engage with girls on those is that any low-value picture on your Instagram, even if you, like, try really hard and she can be out or it's working against you or if she doesn't like how many followers you have working against you, um... I just, I don't like to add in more variables. I like to keep it minimal. So when they say, do you have Instagram or Snapchat? I say, no, it wastes too much time. I deleted it. And plus it has like low conversion from the people that I know that yeah. use those platforms. Dude, I've had numerous girls who would say, you know what? Yes, let's we'll hang out sometime. You actually asked for my number. She's like, I'm so tired of all these guys just asking for my Snapchat. She'll be like, you're the, like, you're the first guy in two weeks that actually asked for my phone number. She's like, no one has done that. She's like, just because of that, I'm not, you know, I want to go out with you. Like, I've had that happen so many, not so many, but a lot of times. So I think that it's easy. It's like more of a cop out to just ask for the Snapchat, ask for Instagram. It's like there's less chance of rejection or something like that. So I feel like a lot of guys cop out. Like, they have a good interaction. Like, let me get your snap. But no, fuck that. What's your phone number? <laughs> yeah, I always discourage clients to get their Insta or their, um, what's it called? <laughs> chat, bleak chat. Okay, so um, next up, business. Uh, yeah, this is something we could probably talk for several hours about. But what would be like your, uh, you know, you have a successful business? What would be like a lot of guys in the pickup community? Unfortunately, are very broke, right? And I think that you know that's one of the things that works against them. You know, they live in their mom's basement, something like that, or you know, they, they physically can't afford to buy a girl a drink, which sucks. And I've been there when I was in my early twenties, but obviously, you want to stay broke your whole life. What are like some keys to that guys can be like better off financially? Um, I, I think with any with any getting better at anything, you just have to find people that are are where you want to be or that are, are the best in the industry and learn from them. Like for to get good at anything, you need like a good mentor and someone who did it, and then just copy exactly what they're doing. It's really that simple. So if you want to master business, find people that are making a shitload of money and then do what they're doing. Was there any books that you recommend for business? 
Um, sources. No, I, just, I like Influence by Robert Caldini and then his Persuasion follow up, but those are more for persuasive and not. But I think most business shit is just self help scamming, most of it. So there's, there's some really soft stuff. I've, I, I can recommend numerous books. One I'm reading right now is uh, um, it's the new Tony Robbins book on uh, whatever, like Master the Money Game or something like that. Like that book is actually solid based on like statistics and facts. Um, but yeah, it's a quick side note. Okay, and then uh, last thing, travel. You know, I think most guys who are in the pickup community probably have never left the country or maybe have traveled to one or two places. Like, why, how, what, what do you guys need to do to, like, why are most guys not traveling? Everyone knows it's easier to get laid in Thailand. It's a cool place or Colombia or whatever. But, like, very few guys are traveling. Like, what, what's kind of, what are your thoughts on that? Most people's lives are fucking boring. Well, it's also relates back to the money thing. Like if 80% 80, 80 of people, the statistic is 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. So if most people are not doing good in business, most people have zero money to travel. Um, but also it's because they just, people are just content with living fucking shitty lives. I think most people just get us, get some fucking job and then just sit, settle down in a city and they just plan to live there for a long time. And they get like an average chick most pickup gurus included and then that's it that's, they just fucking grind it out or they fucking raise the kid or whatever uh, most people's lives are just really sad like I, I tried to live um in tons of places still plan on on traveling a whole bunch more um i don't know i don't believe in afterlife and stuff like that but people people just need to like in any kind of field they just need to like stop stop accepting mediocrity like as soon as i read the book the game and mystery method i was like like here I'll, I'll read i have like this private blog i wrote but i was basically like i want to become the best in the world at this and i think that i i did that um but like let's see i said <laughs> let's see age 25 it was in 2009 i'm 36 now um i wrote the start of something big this is like my first post ever i'll pick up something like six sentences as so I, I think I am a very intellectual and intelligent person by applying these abilities to the art of social dynamics and pickup. I hope to drastically improve my success with women. My goal is simple to become a master pickup artist and the best pickup artist in the world. This blog will chronicle my journey. I hope you enjoy the ride as much as I do. And then like do you shit. Do visualization or journaling or anything like that. No, I think that's gay. <laughs> Come on. Can you picture me doing that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't like. I, I like to just like. Um, what is it? <clears throat> I like. I like competing. Like, I. It's fun to like compete against yourself. So like, of course, try to beat everyone in the industry, whatever, whatever you're trying to master. But in like, be relentless about it. But then try to beat yourself because like, like all the best people at everything, they never like said like okay i'm good enough right like i still think there's like a lot more to learning game it's funny because i i had one guy on a forum be like uh john i'd be hard pressed if you could teach me even one or two things i don't know already about game i said oh really because there's a lot i think i could still learn how many girls been with two but, uh, <laughs> I know you're talking but i'm a, a theory junkie it's like oh congratulations you fucking retard but like that's like most, a homeless guy i doubt there's anything you can teach me about money man the thing is, like, even, even like when I first messaged you, I think I was ready at like eight or nine hundred chicks or something. Do you remember how long? When did, when did you first burst onto the scene? By the way, I reviewed some of your stuff, and I was like, I read a bunch of posts, and I was reading, I was combing through all the stuff, and I was like, I think this guy's better than me at online game, and it was really exciting for me because that hadn't happened to me in the community in a long time. But like, how I plugged a lot, or how I like optimized a lot of areas was finding people that were better than me. And then befriending them and spending a lot of time talking with them and then adapting my strategy accordingly and then trying to innovate past what their level was and that's how i improved every area even though but it was also set upon a, a solid foundation and stuff but i was like would you want to like tell what i said like when i messaged you yeah well, as a quick side note i think that this is just for guys because i do i get like a lot of these who pm me and shit and if there's a member, I'll definitely try to respond to them. But in terms of like actually, you know, like engaging, 
big conversation. This was like years back too. Like. What, what did, yeah, I mean, the group was still was kind of taking off. But anyway, what do you do? You, you like offered me value, so you're like, yo, dude, I actually know Night Game really well. I can show you my like whatever my product. So that's like kind of what made me like interested. Right? It wasn't that like I necessarily thought we we're going to become friends or anything. I was just like, all right, well, he has this to offer me. But yeah, you were just like super persistent. But you weren't like you weren't like a creep. You know, like some dudes will just be like, fucking, I don't respond for ten minutes. And my just like fucking Facebook message just blown up. <laughs> oh, funny, funny recent story actually. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name drop at all. But this one guy hit me up on Instagram, and he's like, "Hey man, you know, like uh, I, I noticed that I can really help you with your marketing." And I'm like, "Okay, well, what ideas do you have in mind?" He's like, "Well, let's jump on a call." And I'm like always like hesitant when people want to do that. I'm like, "Dude, I'm pretty busy. Just like give me some idea. You know, what are your ideas? I want to make sure you're legit." And then he sent me some proof. Maybe, maybe not. It was legit. So I was like, okay, like, let's, I'm not going to spend like five, 10 minutes talking to this guy. And then I remember, you know, he pitched me really hard. I was like, okay, I'm like, dude, I'm going to think on all this and I'll get back to you. And then he hit me up with like, uh, like a false time constraint. He's like, listen, I need an answer by Tuesday. Otherwise, I, I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> I am not going to work with you now at all. So, um, yeah, I think a lot, like, you, you didn't do anything, obviously, well, obviously, because you, you know, you fucking know game, but you didn't like do anything that was like, this guy's a fucking weirdo. But I had I had like no shame being like, hey, I really want to learn a bunch of this stuff, even though having I had been with the hundred chicks, whereas most guys would be like, I think it's enough. <laughs> like, but what I realized the other day, because I'm 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 writing a book, um, and I've been yeah, like, I remember you kept talking about your late count. I was like, why does this guy keep telling me how many girls he's fucked? Like, <laughs> well, part of that, well, part of that was like to distinct differentiate myself from just like a normal guy hitting you up. Like, oh, like to show, like, I know what the fuck I was talking about, et cetera. And I can help you with stuff. But what, I, what I've been realizing is I'm, like, writing this book um, detailing the whole fucking whirlwind journey and stuff. And I'm going through, like, why did I have so much drive to, like, keep perfecting every little area of it? And part of it was the childhood abuse. But, like, also what I realized, because I was talking to um, a woman that's helping me flesh out a lot of these ideas, like this writer. And she said that... Um, like I was telling her stories and I was like, like there were, there were times where like, say, say I banged like two chicks in a night, right? Like from night game, like banged a chick at a club, like this one chick the night, like banged a chick, went back out, pulled and banged another chick. And I finished banging the second one at like 3.30 or whatever. And this is in Vegas. And I was supposed to text this third girl at like 3 a.m. And I totally forgot. And I hit her up at like 3.40 and then she didn't reply. And the next morning she's like, hey, like I waited a little bit and went to bed. I would have came over all stuff. And then she flew out the next morning and I was like so upset about it for like several days. My friends were like, dude, we didn't fuck anyone last night. And I was like, I know, but that was just like pure, like, like a pure error. Dude, and your I, drive's insane. I remember when you were visiting me, like we had hooked up, we went on a double date, we hooked up with both girls. And you're like, come on, dude, drinks, let's go out. I'm like, we just got late like an hour ago. Like, let's just fucking chill. Like, no, dude, come well, I, just on. Like, I just like playing out. the game. I just like the game. I just like playing the game. I like I like the game. Like it's, and I also looked at it as like, put every bit of free time either into being at the club, texting with a girl, being on a date, or being with a rotation girl. So that was like the way to take the most data. <laughs> Dude, Jeff, yeah, it, was, it was for science. The craziest drive when it comes to fucking girls that I've ever seen. Like, you, I will hundred percent admit that you are way more motivated than I am. Like hundred. <laughs> You're more really motivated, literally, than I think that's probably a big reason why you got good is because you just have this, like, fucking, I don't know, driving force, which, you know, like, I love pussy. I love fucking girls. I love doing all that shit. But, like, if I, you know, I bang a girl, you know, at night, I don't really need to go out and, like, do more shit. I'm just chilling. Versus you actually want to go well, out. Well, because to me, to me, it's like, not to dehumanize it, but it's like playing chess, like, for a chess grandmaster now. Like, it's, he's not like, oh, yeah, like, fuck this game now. Like, <clears throat> or like, yeah, I'll, I'll just dabble in this. Like once you've mastered, or once you're like, once you see like these skill jumps that correlate into like better girls and better probabilities of getting them, it gets, it becomes like addicting for sure. But also there's not really a, like a good endpoint. I mean, I just very recently dropped a 12 girl rotation um, for those of you that saw that video. And um, yeah, can you quickly touch on that? So just, um, FYI, if anyone's interested, they can check out your video. We'll link in the description. But what made you give up your fucking 2,000 girl rotation to uh, get a girl? <laughs> um, 
Well, largely I'm, I'm scaling up my business right now. Um, I'm working on some fitness goals. I'm trying to put on like 10, 15 pounds. And, um, uh, and I met like probably the, the best girl I've met in the, whole, in the whole game journey who just like checks all boxes, like hot nympho ballet for 12 years. She has like amazing discipline. She was a ballet for 12 years, practicing two hours a day. And, and this was, was Tinder, right? What's that? This, this trick was Tinder, right? Yeah. But she, it's funny because she's, whenever I met a girl like close to this caliber, like it's never through Tinder. It's, I don't know, like it's not like those girls aren't on Tinder, but like, well, it's not, it's, I, I should say it's never through a club. <laughs> it's, it's usually girls, these kind of girls don't go to a club. This girl actually does go to clubs, but, um, she only had just made an account like a week or two before because she was like so bored from the quarantine stuff. Um, and, I, and an intern sourced the lead, a 21-year-old in Ecuador was running my tech scripts. I just outsourced my tendering like a month and a half ago and it was like perfect timing and he matched this chick. And um, she said like my, I have like just set texts that I send to every chick and she said like, um, I just like caught her at the right time or whatever, but normally she wouldn't have responded to something like that. And she had just made an account and we, it, she just turned out to be like as close to my intellectual equals I've ever found, but also hot <clears throat> and an info and there's like no drama. And so since I have these other big business fitness goals and my rotation was consuming my life, I tried cutting it back from like 15 to 12 and then <laughs> it just it, it, there was two to five girls a day. Yeah, I really couldn't get you on a podcast because you were just always fun. Yeah, you've been asking me for weeks to get on a podcast. Your objection all the time. You're like, dude, I want to, but uh, I have a date. <laughs> what about tomorrow night? Oh, I have uh, another date. It was just like nonstop. So. Schedule, like the, my entire schedule for the week was booked. Like literally, there's a different one sleeping over each night, or sometimes it's the same one. And uh, they make you should make breakfast and clean up whatever mess there is in the house. And then when they leave, there's another one arriving within like five, 10 minutes. And Dude, that's like, one place where you and I differ. Like for me, that would just become like over exhausted. Like I wouldn't, uh, that would be like too much. Like I like to have like a long time and shit. Like I don't, I don't like to have a go over even like every single night. Like I had to take two nights off a week. Yeah, it is, it is really refreshing and like kind of being able to do shit again. Yeah. It's like, like the very first day last Monday, like the very first day of our new relationship, me and this girl. And by the way, she says that, she doesn't believe monogamy and I can I can do shit on the side, but I haven't yet. Um, just because I've been getting so much shit done. Um, but like the very first day of the relationship. How much more productive are you in business since you uh, don't run 12 girl rotations? Oh, like at least 10x. <laughs> it's like I look, I, I look back at what I did last week. Business. I, advanced, <laughs> yeah, I advanced a whole bunch of really important areas a lot in just one week and it's going to just keep compounding. But like the very first day of the relationship, that day I had four girls scheduled and I just canceled them all. But it would have been an 18 year old. Once this new girlfriend chick left for work, there would have been an 18 year old that was supposed to come over. I was supposed to get lunch with like this plastic Barbie-ish blonde chick with fake boobs, fake ass, fake lips, Botox. And then there was a really curvy chick coming uh, later in the evening. And there was this like really small, like 42 kilo chick, like 20 little fucking kid. But I, they're always stacked back to back to back. And then the last one stays the whole night and sleeps over and then makes breakfast. And then the next one comes right after she sleeps. So like in the whole week, even though I don't have any real responsibilities, there's like, you know, almost zero free time, which is why like, you were like, well, which night are you free? I was like, there are no free nights. Like, <laughs> and like, if you, if I made like, a podcast, like 3 PM or something like that, <laughs> it's like, fuck that. Uh, I think one thing that's important to touch on, so is that you, uh, just to sum everything up, you got a girlfriend not because you need to get laid. It was because it was more, it didn't come down to sex. The fact you were getting more sex, not having a girlfriend. So I think that's the most, like the most common reason people get a girlfriend. It's because they want steady sex. No, that's dude, I cut off, I cut off. Faster. This is like my best rotation I've ever had. And like eight of them were like down for intermingling threesomes. And I just I guess what I'm trying to make is you you got a girlfriend based on like factors and like other stuff that she brought to the table, not just because she was hot and she was going to fuck. Yeah, yeah, her ass is like almost perfect, I would say, just because she did all the ballet for 12 years and she has Brazilian genetics. But and then her face is super pretty. And then she looks like she's 28, but she looks like 22, 21. Um, because she does all this stuff for her skin. 
her mom, her mom's like 60 something and her mom looks like late thirties or something. So like, I don't know. I don't know how long we're making plans and stuff, but like neither one of us believe in marriage or having kids. So like that won't happen. And she's down to learn pickup, which is really exciting because even like girls that are bad at game beat like any like top male wing. And then if I train her in game and usually like really smart people I found can get really, really, really good too. So she could become like possibly like the best wingman, but she's also like super smart. She's a surgeon and a professor. As you would. All right, bro, let's crack into the questions because we have so many piling up that we've got for a while. Okay. We could definitely like dive much further and deep in some of these topics, which Let I would me... like to do, but then we'll probably get to questions. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. So Hold on. Give me, you, had, you asked this real quick. I'm just going to check on. I have like a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, we're back. We did this one. I'll be right back in one sec. Okay. I'm going to get some water. I'll be back too in like one minute. <laughs> it's like abandoning the audience. Here, I can. Uh, since he's walking away for a second, I'm going to shout out my channel, uh, John Anthony Lifestyle. Uh, let me fucking write this in here. John Anthony Lifestyle, new videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. And all my stuff is very straightforward. No fluff, no BS. I'm just shouting out my channel. I'll be right back. All right. What do you think about Pimp Game then? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about Julian's uh, Pimp product. I thought it was one of the best RSD products that uh, RSDO put out. I thought he kind of nailed it when it came to internal game. His external game stuff like is probably somewhat optimal. But in terms of like the four pillars of internal game, I still definitely very much agree with to this day. The only one I feel like he missed is dominance. I feel like that's an important one that he didn't really talk about. But other than that, I thought it was really solid. JAL version of this says in 42 minutes, by the way. I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, just move on. Summary of the story. Tyler's a fraud. Agreed. Alex looking like a male mom. What the fuck? I wish, man. I mean, I've been hitting the gym a little bit. John, your transformation over the past couple months is incredible. I watched your supplement videos from the other day, and there are a million, billion you take. What is AD20 of supplements you recommend? I'll have John answer that. But yeah, for a moment, I just, you know, just someone who's known him for several years, like, he looks like five years younger now than he did two years ago. Like, well, I'll have to get him. He should make a video one of these times where he compares, like, what he looked like three years ago and what he looks like now. Like, he showed me pictures back to back, and it's like a fucking whole different human being. But I'll, ask, I'll let him answer this question. I know one big one that he always recommends is uh, resveratrol or something like that. I know it's a big one that he's about. Um, I'll one. Yeah, John, what are the supplements you really recommend, the most important ones? Uh, supplements. Oh, um, for, 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 for inflammation. Well, there's a Japanese study with 8,000 participants, so it's pretty statistically significant. That says, um, your the the rate uh, the ratio of omega six to omega three. The more they're out of balance, the more you have an inflammation. It's a linear increase of risk for the top 50 degenerative diseases. So, like almost all diseases related to inflammation. So that means. Uh, taking high dosage omega-3 fish oil and curcumin. Curcumin actually blocks cancer in like 12 different ways. And it activates this P53 gene that'll hunt out cancers. So cells are about to turn cancers, initiate uh, apoptosis. Um, so yeah, curcumin and omega-3 fish oil and then reduce refined grain sugars, processed foods, etc. cetera. Um, the other big supplements are vitamin D and- 73% of people or something like that deficient in vitamin D. It's like over 90, I think. Also, oh, ninety. Sure. I, I follow. There's this guy Ray Kurzweil. If you if you Google Kurt, Kurzweil supplement regimens, K U R Z W E I L, he's the director of engineering for Google. He's like a genius. He's like frozen his biological age. Um, he says the three most important supplements are uh, vitamin D, phosphatidylcholine, which reju rejuvenates cell membranes to youthful levels, and I can't remember the third one, but resveratrol and uh, NMN are. Um, 
As a quick side note, if your if your skin is darker, then vitamin D is even more important for you. So for like white people like me and John, like it's important, but it's not as important. We tend to be less deficient than someone who's darker. Like it's much more common for someone darker to be deficient in vitamin D because you know the answers just came from a very sunny place. Now you know they may live in like fucking Canada or something, and they're highly uh, inadequate. So definitely very important. I uh, just got an MN and transfer scrolls for skin elephants. Start starting there. Okay, cool. Yeah, the book, the book. Uh, <laughs> don't put that fucker up. That fucker's trying to say, oh, his count must be all fives. And he's saying, he's saying, because I'm living in South America right now, because I'm tall, and because I oh, use. What are you talking about? Which comment? This dude who's up on the screen. This oh. guy said, because I'm in South America and I'm tall. Most of my account is from the U.S. I have a video on my channel um, where I go over the places I've lived. Like I was in, you've been was, like in every single part of the world. You've been in, you've been to China, you've been everywhere. So, yeah, but most wow. of my account is in the U.S. So, that's and I don't think you're denying at all that it's easier in South America. You're not saying that no, no. it's exactly the same. You're like, yeah, but it's not like it's a, a big part of it. We like could also got, do it in other countries. Like I just got to South America four months ago, and then um, the only other South American country I lived in was uh, Medellin and Bogota. It was like under one month total between both. So, uh, all right. Both of all, both of us should have an OnlyFans. <laughs> I have a, I have girls that are down to do that. I've been on a girl's OnlyFans once. I'm sure most of you guys can figure out which girl it was. Um, <laughs> I might do more of that in the future. It's kind of fun. This is the girl from your escalation video. Yeah, dude. I got uh, the video she made. We got uh, ten thousand views in like five days or something like that. It was insane. Mm. It's so dumb that like just a one-off video like that defines people's <laughs> channels, right? Like that's what you need to do to like get a whole show of people just like get, get a viral. Yeah, that's why like so many celebs only became celebs after a sex tape came out. Like no one knew about uh, Kim Kardashian or uh, you know, like any of those uh, chicks or Paris Hilton before the sex tape came out. There's a lot of people who say, and I kind of agree with this, is that a lot of them did a sex leaked a sex tape on purpose to kickstart their career, which kind of makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so let's just – you can film and then describe the video. I'm not really sure which one I was referring to. We're just going to go through all these pretty quick, guys. So, for example, if we miss, miss anything, you can just comment below and me and John or, you know, whatever, post in you know, his group or my group and we'll answer. But we're going to try to go through these pretty fast. Uh, Julian Wife is a 10. Okay, disagree. If Alex's nose wasn't wonky, he'd be a 10. No, probably not. It'd still be like an eight and a half. Uh, Oscom Razor is complete Joker Pro and don't buy a complete Red Pulp. Okay, pure bullshit. I've personally gone through I've personally gone through John's product. He has like 40, 40 videos. Over 70 in the poll. I think just well, that. Really good. Yeah, really good. This is, yeah, that's obviously total BS. I just put up a video how a guy went from zero to 47 chicks in six months. There's tons of guys who got an amazing outfit. I have like a million reviews of guys crushing yeah. with it. So well, there's, there's always a few haters to pop up. Yeah, so, uh, someone is just calling this guy out. Okay. So Jesus God, this guy fucking reciprocity is trolling so hard. Everyone is short in RFD. Yeah, he's uh, saying that her ex is Julian, like six too. Uh, straight line system, mystery method, I guess stuff. Okay, yeah. I'll post that next one. That guy's a fucking fag. Uh, Anyways. Okay, Todd you. married an average chick and got uh, trashed his shit. Okay. Who the doing. fuck is this guy? It's so, dude, know, it's so funny. <laughs> hey, let's put up all the most negative shit. Dude, it's, it's just so funny how also, like, there's so many guys who, like, are super tough online, but in real life, they would never say shit to your face. Like, Internet enables dude to like be like internet tough guys. Like most of these guys are the biggest pussies in real life. Yeah. Observation. Well, it's clearly better than RSD after a while. They seem to wishy washy, not the select cuts. All right. There's like, like people. Hold on. There's like multiple. What are the odds? Oh, making? this is a good one. Mm. This is my mom, actually. <laughs> She's watching this. You're reaching the age that your game is kind of going to be obsolete what is next who me um i think maybe both of us honestly no not at all i have clients in their late 40s and 50s destroying yeah 
Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think game is ever obsolete. I think you need to modify a little bit as you get older, but I don't think it's obsolete. I still regularly bang 18, 19 year olds. Like I, guys are like, oh, like that's gonna become a problem soon. I have clients in their late forties banging 18, 19 year olds. All right, so let's, let's just go through these. John's game is good. Being gringo increases how much your results in Brazil. So uh, that's a good question. How much, how much of an advantage would you say it is? Um, I don't know. I know plenty of gringos here that don't get laid at all. I know plenty of gringos that go down to South America and don't get laid. Um, it, it can help sometimes. Uh, let's see. Here, hold down the fort for me because I hear a bunch of people mobilizing to leave. I'm just going to come back in a sec. Okay. My, my opinion on this is that he definitely – so I've never been to Brazil. I've been to Colombia. And that uh, I remember last time I was in Medellin, I literally was like over fucking swamped with girls. I was canceling dates on like eights because it's just like too many, couldn't keep up. So I think it's a – I think it's a – I would say it's a huge advantage, honestly. If you know what you're doing, it's a huge advantage. Uh, but, I, you know, I live in Miami. I've lived all across the U.S., you know. I get laid in every city I've ever lived. It's just easier. Like I, I can put in less work. And, you know, just, you know, probably hook up with even hot, not so much hotter, but it's just easier, I would say, like when I'm in South America, because there's so many girls who are just down. I remember when I was in Medellin, it also creates like a positive cycle. When every girl is down, you just become more confident, more at ease. I remember when I was in Medellin, I, was, I noticed that literally like one out of every two girls that approached was a number that led to a date. Like it was like some insane number. Every single number I got was like a girl was like super down and to the point where she was like hitting me up like all the time so i was noticing like some insane percentage like that even though like most of the girls didn't even speak english so i think a big part of this also creates a positive cycle uh when you're getting like top, top, tons of positive feedback but yeah man it's definitely a huge factor but again i think that learning game in uh the us like i think me and john did actually gives you an advantage because you kind of understand what it's like when it's at the hardest i mean obviously middle east or something like that would be even harder but you know you understand game here so then when you do go to like uh you know whatever south america or southeast asia it's just like you you take everything you already know and you have like a lot more results okay okay let's get through that can you go through open to close during night game really quick i had trouble isolating how do you do it uh, oh, that might be a long question, but check out. So John actually has, uh, we're going to link his channel in the description below. He actually has a video. He, it's called his like night game manifesto where he actually does break this down in extreme detail. Uh, so just check that out. Uh, we're going to link his channel below. White plus third world country. Plus six four mansion seeking an arrangement at low plus low stands five hundred rounds massive honor because over a thousand lays. Uh, no, uh, first of all, J Malt does not use seeking arrangement at all in South America. Second of all, I haven't seen every girl he fucks, but I've seen a good amount of them, and they are pretty fucking hot. Um, I would say that also a lot of most of these girls he was at, I think well over a thousand before he even got to Brazil. So I'm going to call fake news on that. Okay. Jesus Christ, we're getting a lot of troll. Don't believe the market that anyone can do this. Study Black Pill and decide if the game is worth it for you. So Black Pill is largely a bunch of bitter butter dudes who can't get laid and they basically blame it on women. So I don't think that's a healthy community at all. I think the one they maybe get a few things right, like uh, sexual market value, but they overstress it to like the umph degree. Like according to their logic, only like Perfect male models can get laid. Everyone else is fucked, so no. Game starts with you first. Okay, I don't know what that means. Hey, I was on mute. Fuck, I put it on mute, my bad. Yeah, put that Daniel Medvedev faggot in uh, timeout. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, um, I've oh, torn it up. Put it in, huh? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I've torn it yeah. up in every, every single city and every single country I've lived in. Like, and I just got South America. Guys are like, oh, he visited South America briefly. His whole count is South American girls. It must be. Guys are always looking to blame their city, to blame their height, to blame their race. He got laid because he's white. He got laid because he's tall. He got laid because it's it's not America. I've torn up like any tiny city I've lived in. I've torn up hard cities where there are tons of prudes. If your game is good, you can still crush. It's not like, yes, 
you, you can get other advantages in other areas. Yes, tall guys have an advantage. Yes, white guys have an advantage in South America. But I've crushed in other areas. I just like Latinas, and I don't like cunty internals and Americans and seeing fat people everywhere. So I'm not going to live there. Dude, I'll, I'll make a challenge. I think you'll probably you'll probably you'd be down to the same thing. I'll make a challenge right now. If there's any hater who wants to like fucking debate me, like have a, like an actual debate, uh, I'm gonna I'll invite them on and we'll go. We'll do it. We can fucking censor them if they want. If they want to stay anonymous, like I'm totally down to do that. Uh, you know what I don't want to do is spend an hour just like fucking going back and forth on in the comments. But if you actually want to either write an article or come on. I'll put up the full unedited thing on my YouTube. So if you have some, you know, if you want to fucking, I don't know, disprove me or John, then you're more than welcome to come on and we'll actually talk. Seriously. I wouldn't offer that. And that's some, I, I think these guys are fucking fags. I just call yeah, them. They'll, they'll never come on, but yeah. So, but I, this, this count, this is an open offer. Okay. John, what's your goal for late count by age four? Oh shit. That's a good question. Uh, I don't have one. Where do you think you will be at age 50? I don't know. Things are, things are changing. Like, um, I don't know. There's a, I want to, I want to do a lot of other things in life now as well. I'm still going to be banging lots of chicks probably, but, um, I have like other goals centered around other, other areas. Like my main, my main goals are, um, living as long as possible and extending lifespan as much as possible and being fulfilled and, maximal ways across all of life like the like the game stuff is like fully mastered like i can just like turn the switch back on and build a rotation like a big rotation in like two weeks like yeah. in any in any city in the whole world so it doesn't i'm not like grinding out to get better or anything like that like in the, in the before i got the, with this chick there was a week with like the 12 girl rotation where I, where I had like almost 10 new ones straight to the house all pretty attractive and i canceled on all of them so it was like you get to a point of diminishing returns where it's like you could get better, but it's like you're getting like 10% better is only going to give you like maybe 2% more results, you know, where like honestly your best, best bang for your buck just comes down to sexual market value or, you know, business or whatever, like more, much more so than like getting to that like top 5%, like whatever. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah, I'm shooting hard to put on 10, 15 pounds and scale up the company as best possible. Yeah. I have, a, I have I have a feel he has a lot of money and that's all he needs to get women. That's all the money. I was broke for most of my you life. You were broke for a long time. At the height of when I was doing the best in game, I was down to like a hundred bucks. Yeah. When I was doing like really, really, really well. When I was living in a penthouse in San Diego. I was broke up until I was like twenty six. Like when I first moved out to LA between the age of twenty two and twenty six, when I was like really like doing the most pickup, I was so broke. And that, that's not by coincidence because I was doing so much pickup. Dude, yeah, these, these questions are all fucking stupid. Are there, are there any other? This is just one person after another saying, oh, let me take one trait and make that the magic pill for his I, I don't know why we're getting so many trolls. What do you think about Bradicus? Feel like he's fake. So you, you actually like Bradicus a lot, right? Yeah. At first, I didn't. It's because he, did, he put off a lot of beta type vibes, but um, he's proved, he's shown. Like I, I just respect the fact that he's shown so much proof and he talks about results um, in terms of numbers and all that stuff. And he works hard and puts out a lot of good stuff um, and a lot of advanced stuff that I've discussed with him in private lines up with what I'm doing or close to it. Uh -huh. So I think, you know what the story was real quick off to topic. I think um, Bradicus punched uh, like Marcus Wolf or one of those in the face. Do you know what the story is there? I don't know that whole story. I guess yeah, uh, we got to I got to ask him. Uh, but yeah, there's some kind of funny story there. Uh, okay. Here, do you want to shout out? There's, this is all fucking. I gotta like go sort this all out with everybody leaving and shit. Do you want to like shout out? You're offering like a discount if if people are interested in my stuff. Yes, let's do let's do like three more questions, then we'll crack into that. Right. Where do you buy your anti aging products? Do they deliver in Brazil? That's a good question. Uh, Life Extension Foundation is like one of the best uh, places out there. Um, well, for anti-aging, just read David Sinclair's book, uh, Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. There's summaries out there as well in the audio book. Um, oh, yeah, I remember you told me about that one. He, he says for, for resveratrol, it needs to be trans resveratrol and it needs to be 98%. A lot of them come in 50% or they're not the trans version. So, 
you need to be pro trans. Uh, Brazilian <laughs> parties are awesome. We have so we have many many girls, many many opportunities, and a party like John described is easy. Kiss ten girls, tons of numbers, and it's not hard to get. I mean, I'm sure that's probably true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, from everything I've heard, Brazilian parties are cool. Uh, Alex, your natural friend saw what is this polling percentage? If you guessed about ten. Dude, that kid, I, it was, uh, okay, so the thing about him, though, is he was really good at picking up on vibes. So he would typically, unless, like, I challenged him, he would typically approach girls that he sensed some interest in. I would say it was, like, maybe, like, 40 50% right now, maybe, like, 30%. It was insane. Like, but, yeah, he wasn't approaching, mass approaching. It was very, like, targeted in that style. Um, yeah. I would actually love, love, he, he would never do it right now. He's married with a kid. But to have him come on a live stream, that would be awesome. All right, let's do one more question. We'll just crack into. Yeah, I'm down to. Yeah, I'm almost out of battery too on this one because I went to the other room. Um, club Space Miami is the greatest club this side of the world. Not the best place for picking up girls, but for music. Yeah, yeah I've been I, there. I've never been there. I've, um, I've been, you've never been there. You live in Miami? No, I've been. I, I lived in Miami for like three months in 2015. I dude, went there. I've, yeah. I've only ever been to one club in Miami. I don't fucking ever. This is just a bunch of drugged up ravers there. Um, all right, so let's let's um because I know you gotta go, so let's just crack into it. So um right now, so basically what we're doing is for anyone who's a playing with fire subscriber, and uh remember we're offering a 25% discount on your night game product, right? Yeah, it's it's basically it's um four main sections. It's night game, so bars and clubs game, uh day game, street malls, cafes, um, online game, which is a little bit different approach than yours, and then dates how to run your dates and there's over 70 uh head camera infields uh texting flow charts all that shit um you have the link to put up Can yeah we're gonna put it in the description if you put okay yeah. if you yeah okay. we'll, put, we'll put all that in the description well yeah so you have how many how many infields from start to finish on your product over 70 that they get to keep you have 70 over 70 yeah so I have like a million infields, but we just took like a lot of the best ones and put them in the product. Yeah, honestly, that's, that's like my, I mean, you have a good product, but my favorite part is the infields from start to finish. Yeah, it's yeah. There's like a bunch for night game, bunch like for just worth it by itself. There's like them. there's like five full length dates as well. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, man. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no. It just it just goes back to the same old shit with these motherfuckers talking shit that's why i mean like we're, we're taking a lot of our products more mainstream the, the community is a lot of fucking stupid trolls well to be, to be fair though it's, it's only like there's like a small amount of bad apples like most of the guys who follow our content are cool they're like normal more or less people there's just like the most the, you know it's usually like the trolls who are the most vocal but so that's why i, I my challenge to have any troll who wants to come on to fucking debate me uh, I can. I'll censor your face. I'll censor your name. Whatever, and I'll show the whole thing from start to finish. So, if you're a humongous hater, I, I would fight trolls. I would fight trolls in reason, unless they're extremely what? skilled martial artists. I said I would fight trolls, probably on camera. Yeah. Do you, would you do the same thing as I'm doing? Like you to uh, allow any troll to come on and debate you? No, I, I have no problem doing that. It's just a waste of my time. It was kind of fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that offer applies to me. Uh, all right, cool, man. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. We're going to link. How should people follow you? YouTube, right? That's your most popular platform. Yeah, John John Anthony Lifestyle. Uh, new videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. If you check out the essential videos, I tell like in 10 minutes how to close back at the house. I go over like my almost entire night game strategy in an hour and a half, how to pick up girls at bars and clubs. Um, I have a five-hour video where I drank a whole bottle of liquor and rant about various things. It's pretty popular. And I also bash on other faggot coaches. If you're is your most popular video something about like why are these sucks or something like that? Yeah, it's just bashing on Tyler for like an hour <clears throat> in Portugal. How many views did that video get? 75K. That's crazy. Dude, you put out like these detailed technical videos. Yeah, nobody you cares. You always so much and you get like a thousand <laughs> views. Then you make a video where you're drunk <laughs> and you're just fucking rambling on and on. And I guess it's your most popular video. And nobody cares about the like some of my best game videos have like under a thousand views. Dude, I put out super technical videos that I spent days working on editing, and like those get like a thousand, two thousand views. And then I make a video where just me and this girl who I bang just go on camera and fuck around for five minutes, and that gets it's 250,000 views right now. It's insane, but it's just like just so funny about this thing. Um, 
All right, cool, man. So thank you for coming on. I know you got to go. We'll uh, chat later. Let's do another one of these sometime in the near future. I'll actually quickly answer. Yeah, I got a few minutes. I'll quickly answer some of these questions. I'm still curious if John Anthony is legit. Yes, he is. I can vouch for him. Uh, I only trust Austin, Kevin, Wheeler, Avery, Hayden, and Todd v. Uh Austin, I don't know in person. I'm, I've talked to him, though. He seems very legit. Kevin, I'm not sure who that is. Avery, I just met him quite recently, but from everything I've seen, talked to him, he seems legit. Todd V is probably one of the best in terms of the RSD, but uh, highly overrated. Um, the average quality hooks up with is not that great. Um, yeah, just, there's just a lot of things that he failed to evolve in. But like, if I had to pick to hang out with any of the RSD guys, it'd definitely be either Todd or Julian. Uh, I've actually met Todd uh, briefly in person. He was a cool, down to earth, humble guy. So I like him as a person. Uh, but yeah, true. Anthony does touch his face when he mentions something of local beer. Okay, bullshit. Uh, Girls in the US are maybe are may beautiful that are as beautiful, but in Brazil they have better bodies and better clothes. Well, I would say that the body is like a huge part. So for example, me personally, like by far the most important thing is the girl's body. Like I can totally, you know, whatever, get with a girl who has an ugly face, if she has a slamming body, but I cannot get with a girl with a beautiful face if her body is just disgusting. So I think now I would make an argument that's like a huge part of it as well. Alex has a good taste game. I've learned from him quite a bit. Definitely glad to hear. Austin Summer, I believe, said so talk about him. But yeah, Austin's a cool guy. Yeah, we'll just do a few more. How did boot camp go? Does he teach? Okay, so I don't, I wasn't there. John, aren't you limited to a 90 day visa in terms of staying in Brazil long term? How are you able to? Oh, that's a good question. I'm actually, I'm not really sure what the answer to that is. John, have you tried real life therapy? Um, I don't know if he has, but I've heard of it and I've actually been very curious about it. And I hear it's actually very legit. Um, I, I'm a friend of a friend actually has her own, um, what's it called, red light, whatever machine, and she swears by it. So it's actually something that I'm like actively contemplating doing myself. I hear it's definitely legit, but I've never tried personally. Okay, no kissing and physical escalation night game in five minutes sets it impossible since it is. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely like pretty much in every night game interaction, even if it's five minutes, I'm gonna escalate a little bit. It doesn't need to be a long make out, but you know, just a hand on her hip, like hand on her shoulder, just like running your hand down her back, uh, like an extended, like when you're leaving, just giving her an extended like peck on the lips. Like it can, there's so many, so many, like your uh, escalation doesn't just have to be a long may cap. There's so many other ways to escalate. Um, so actually personally, as a quick side note, I don't really, I don't like to go for the make out within the first five minutes. I think that's actually a suboptimal strategy. I like to, even if I can, I like to build um, a lot of sexual tension and then use that sexual tension to pull. How do you keep women while being polygamous? I feel most women will be turned off as soon as they hear that. So here's my answer on this. I think probably John will say something similar. Um, first of all, you don't you don't rub it in their face. So it's kind of like every girl who I hook up with, like right now I'm seeing three, four girls. Every single one of them knows that I am, but we never talk about it. I never rub it in their face. It's kind of like they prefer not to talk about it. I prefer not to talk about it. Just like if one of the girls I'm seeing, you know, fucked another guy like a few weeks ago, i just rather not know. I'm not going to bring it up. She's not going to bring it up. So one is you don't rub it in their face, which kind of, you also, you, they want to feel special basically. So if you start bringing up the fact that you're hooking up with other girls, it's going to completely ruin their ability to feel special. But a girl can feel special if, you know, if you're still polygamous, like if you're doing, you know, if you're giving her some great sexual experience, you're cuddling, you know, you're just opening up to her, you're occasionally doing some activities, uh, you know, like there's like all this shit you can do. Like, for example, one girl who I've been, uh, you know, 
seeing uh, lately. A thing that we've been doing lately is we've been uh, just like fucking cooking together, like cooking paleo food. That's like our thing. So we just like fucking whip off all this delicious food. Um, so it's just like like all the all these things that you can do. Uh, another girl I made a bunch of videos with. So it's just like so many little things. So a girl can feel special uh, if you're probably in this. But most women are, but they won't be turned off if you're in a relationship. It's just hookups that wouldn't care and then die like this polygamous. Uh, I'm kind of lost on this question. We'll do one last one. Okay, this is a good way to end it off. Opinion on red pill. Um, mostly bullshit. So I think I do agree that sexual market value is important. I think they drastically overemphasize how important it is. Like they pretty much treat it like you know, your looks are the most important thing. Like, versus like, I know plenty of people who are way better looking than me and they have no game and I do way better than them. So they're both important. You need you need to focus on maximizing your sexual market value. Game is also important and other factors like that are important. So I feel like red pill is just too tunnel vision. Another thing I don't like about them is they treat like, they kind of, they basically think like, yeah, all women are fucking, you know, not to be trusted. And again, they kind of lump women into one category. In reality, there's some great women, there's some women who suck. Just like there's some great, you know, bros out there and some bros who suck. There's women who I would trust with, you know, all my money right now, and there's women who I would trust with a dollar. Just like I have, you know, I know male friends who I trust with all my money, and I know, you know, dudes who I would trust with a dollar. So again, it's just like they, they just they've had a few bad experiences with women, and they just attribute that to every other woman. All right, guys, I just realized we went for about two hours. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you can always go to forums.playingfire.com. Ask me there anything. Um, you know, I will try to always get back to everyone. Um, also, if you haven't yet, check out our product, Online Game Blueprint. It's um, We'll link that in the description below as well. Uh, check out also our Instagram, at Real Playing Fire. Always posting a lot of free value there. All right, awesome, guys. Thank you for joining. And until next time.